This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi, it's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, Skincare Nerd, and Pigment Producing Machine. I am super prone to pigmentation. It runs in my family. Here is a photo of my dad. Unfortunately, I inherited these genes. My sister did not, so I took one for the team here. I've talked about visible light and blue light and their effects on pigmentation in lots of detail before. I'll link those videos in the description. But there's been more studies done since then. Fortunately, my conclusions are still correct. In short, the vast majority of us don't have to worry about visible light or blue light coming from our screens, there just isn't enough light coming from them. But if your skin is darker and more prone to pigmentation, you might have to worry about visible light coming from the sun. Visible light from the sun, in particular short wavelength high energy blue light, can make pigment problems worse. The main ones are melasma and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, so this is stuff like the dark marks that you get left on your skin after acne. So today I'm going to give an update of what we found out about protecting your skin from visible light, and you might actually be doing it already. If you like nerding out about the science behind beauty products, click the like, the subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. One topic that wasn't very well fleshed out when I made my first video was how does blue light actually cause pigmentation? It's still not super well researched, but it looks like it's mostly to do with a protein in your skin that senses light, a photoreceptor called opsin-3. Once opsin-3 is triggered by enough blue light, it sends a signal to your skin, the melanocytes in your skin, these are the pigment producing cells, to produce more pigment. It might also have something to do with oxidation and free radicals, but this seems to be less important. So there are some studies that have found that some antioxidants can seem to help with reducing how much pigment you produce after exposure to blue light. But most of the focus is now on preventing that blue light from getting to your skin in the first place. Basically it's on making products that work like sunscreen, but for blue light. So which products will actually protect your skin against blue light? Earlier research found that regular sunscreens, like the ones that go on your skin and either go transparent or they look maybe a little bit white, actually aren't that good at protecting against visible light. Even if you have a thick white layer of mineral or physical sunscreen, it still doesn't work very well. But some of the early studies found that tinted physical sunscreens gave pretty good protection. Physical or mineral sunscreens are the ones that contain zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide. The tint is from iron oxides. There are three iron oxides that are used to make products look skin colored. These are in things like foundations and tinted sunscreens. These are red, yellow, and black, and they're added in different amounts and different ratios to get the different shades of skin. A lot of the time they're listed in the ingredients list as their color index number, their CI number, I've listed them here. And all the iron oxides absorb a bit of blue light, which is how they protect against blue light. So that's why you've probably heard a lot about tinted physical sunscreens and blue light protection. At this point, you might be a little bit confused because if you've watched my videos before, you'll know that physical and chemical sunscreens mostly work the same way. They mostly absorb UV and turn it into a small amount of heat. And they also scatter and reflect a tiny bit, but that amount is really tiny. So why is everyone focusing on mineral and physical sunscreens? Here's where it gets a little bit complicated. It's to do with titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is one of the active ingredients in mineral sunscreens. It's really good at protecting against UV. It also tends to be the ingredient that gives the worst white cast. One way of getting rid of this white cast is by chopping up the titanium dioxide into smaller particles. These are usually nano-sized particles. This makes the titanium dioxide scatter and reflect a lot less visible light, and so you get less of that white look. And it also actually increases UV absorption, so it actually works as a better sunscreen filter. But on the flip side, it tends to make it worse at visible light protection. But when you have bigger particles of titanium dioxide, so this is 200, 300 nanometers, this tends to give really bad white casts because it scatters and reflects so much white light. These bigger particles are also worse at UV protection, so they're not really used in sunscreens, although sometimes they do form by accident, because if you have uncoated titanium dioxide, it tends to clump together and form these bigger particles anyway. And that tends to bring down the SPF protection and give unnecessary white cast. 
but this scattering of visible light that's so annoying in sunscreens is actually pretty useful for visible light protection. Scattering means that the path of the light gets changed, and so instead of taking a straight line through the sunscreen film, it'll actually bounce around in the film for a bit longer, it takes a longer path. And if you have iron oxides in there as well, then that means there's a higher chance of it hitting some iron oxide and getting absorbed before it gets to your skin. These larger particles are called pigmentary titanium dioxide, and as you expect from the name, they're used in pigments, they're not used as sunscreens. It's the main colour ingredient in things like white eyeshadow and white eyeliner, but you actually find it in lots of other makeup products as well. A white colour is really good at covering stuff up, it's really opaque. It's used in foundations and tinted sunscreens to give them coverage, and in fact you actually usually find more titanium dioxide in these products than you find iron oxides. It's like how if you have a dark thing and you want to paint it a light colour, you usually cover it up with white first and then paint the light coloured paint on top. So if you see a tinted sunscreen and it has titanium dioxide in it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is a physical sunscreen. If it has these larger particles of pigmentary titanium dioxide in it, then that titanium dioxide isn't helping with the UV protection, the sunscreen part, but it is helping with the tinted part. That means that the sunscreen part isn't actually that important. I mean, it is important, it's super important for protecting your skin against UV, and UV is more strongly linked to pigment and other changes in your skin than visible light is. But when we're talking about visible light, it's that combination of pigmentary titanium dioxide and iron oxides that's doing the protecting work. Based on that, we'd expect tinted chemical sunscreens to protect against visible light as well, and yes, they do. In a study from Brazil, the researchers looked at 41 different tinted sunscreens. They measured how much blue-violet light went through a layer that was 2 mg per square centimetre thick, the standard amount for a sunscreen. They found that 26 of these sunscreens, which is almost two-thirds of them, blocked over 99.9% .9 of the visible light, and this included both chemical and physical sunscreens. In the same study, they also tested three non-tinted sunscreens, and they found that they didn't protect against visible light much at all. And so based on that mechanism, foundations also protect against visible light. And in fact, in a couple of studies, it was actually foundation light products with high coverage that gave better visible light protection than tinted sunscreens. This isn't too surprising because a more opaque product will have more pigmentary titanium dioxide and more iron oxides. In one study, they found that a foundation with SPF 35 gave better visible light protection than a tinted sunscreen with higher SPF protection. In another study, they found that visible light protection wasn't correlated with SPF, so a higher SPF product isn't necessary to protect you from visible light. Then why are so many of these visible light studies on tinted sunscreens rather than on foundations? I think that it's just because a tinted sunscreen is way more practical for most people who aren't skincare and makeup enthusiasts like us. A lot of us prefer using two separate specialised products because it means that you have a lot more control over the final outcome, how the final look is. Tinted sunscreens only come in a few shades, and so if your skin doesn't match one of these popular colours according to someone in product development, then you're not going to have a good colour match. It's a lot easier to get a good colour match if you use a foundation. There's also the fact that most of these studies tested the product at 2 milligrams per square centimetre. This is a pretty unrealistic amount for most tinted products, it can make you look like you've got face paint on. So if you're only relying on a tinted sunscreen, and that tinted sunscreen has too much tint to apply the proper amount, then you're going to have less UVA, UVB, and visible light protection. But if you have a separate sunscreen as well, something that you can apply a lot of, then at least you're not missing out on that UV protection. But you can imagine how hard it would be for a dermatologist to convince someone who isn't using either sunscreen or makeup to suddenly start using both. It's much easier to convince them to start using a single product, and this is the direction that most companies seem to be heading in. Hopefully the extra focus on tinted sunscreens means that they'll start making more shades. And the fact that visible light affects people with darker skin more hopefully means that they'll put more effort into making darker shades that actually match darker skin. This isn't really something the beauty industry has been really good at so far, so I'm not sure how optimistic I should be. So in short, if you want to prevent pigment from the sun, your best bet is high UVA protection and a tinted product with heavy coverage. That can be a sunscreen and a separate concealer or foundation, or a tinted sunscreen that goes on well. 
And like with UV, there are other ways to avoid visible light exposure that's not just sunscreens, and if you use them with sunscreens, it tends to work better. So I'm talking about things like staying in the shade during the middle of the day when it's the sunniest, and using things like hats and clothing to protect your skin. I hope you liked this video, if you did click the like, the subscribe, also leave me a comment letting me know what else you want me to talk about. You can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and check out my blog as well. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and for allowing me to make super nerdy deep dives into pretty much anything I want, which is honestly so nice of them. Skillshare is an online community that has thousands of classes on lots of topics like design, photography, web development, marketing, and analytics. Most of the classes are less than an hour, so it's really achievable to learn something new, even with a tight schedule. I recently became obsessed with houseplants. I know this is peak pandemic millennial, and yes, I also got a tool recently that lets me make smash avocado on toast really efficiently. Anyway, it turns out Skillshare has a whole bunch of classes on how to look after houseplants. I went to an agricultural high school, so I thought I knew a lot about plants, but it turns out that knowing how to grow 200 acres of radishes isn't really the same as keeping a houseplant alive. I learned a lot from Chris Satch, who is a botanist. His class is called Happy Houseplants Caring for Your Plants. Apparently you're meant to throw out dead leaves and not just let them drop into the pot and rot and do the whole circle of life thing. The rotting leaves can actually attract pests and cause disease. So now I can stop feeling bad about micromanaging how my plants look. I'm not being a shallow stage mum, I am helping. If you want to check out Skillshare, the first thousand people to click the link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. It's normally less than $10 a month with a yearly subscription. Thanks for watching.